Hey everybody, look, y'all know about Christian Coleman. You know that he's been on a whereabouts drug ban, but that thing is going to be lifted. He'll be able to come back next year in 2022. And this video is about, can he defend his title? All right. Can he defend his title against uh, the, the likes of Jacobs, Curly, and others, right? Can Trayvon Bromel actually do it in the final and run fast? So that's what we're going to discuss here today. All right. So if you're here on this channel, don't forget to consider supporting the channel through Patreon, checking out the NFTs on OpenSea, right? Because all of these help these videos keep coming out. Cash app right here and PayPal on your screen is also in the description of every single video. And you are watching Head and Shoulders ATR, where we cover athletes, performances, and otherwise that are head and shoulders above the rest. So today's topic, like I said, is Christian Coleman. So as we always do, we go over some of their bios on each of these. He's the two-time world championship gold medalist. Obviously, you know he's won the 100 and he's got the 4 by one 100 meter relay. Two times world championship silver medalist when he uh, lost against Gatlin. And then he was ahead of Usain Bolt in 2017. Then they finished with a silver medal in the 4 by one uh, that same year. Now, the world indoor championship gold medalist. We know this man has got a world record. Now I could not find the world record that he's got. Now this is the other record that I, I got for him before. And then he lowered that. So the actual world record, just bear with me is 6.34 seconds for the 60 meter indoor. All right. So we know that this man got the jets. He's got the world indoor record for the 60 meter, right? Four-time world championship final. Oh, why the heck did I read that? Obviously. Now, here's his PRs. 9.76. All right. In the 100. 1985 in the 200. 300 meter hurdles. He's not really competing in that or the long jump. So that's not really relevant. 30.10. That's depending on your team. So uh, unless it was. Now, this is a national record. So this is still important to bring up. So he's one of the people. The quartet that's got the national record with Lyles and others and everything like that. So 37.10. But here it comes. Can he defend his title, man? Can he defend his title at the uh, from Doha, the world championship title, next year? Well, this is what I think. He wasn't really banned that long, and it depends. Is he one of the runners that knows how to train himself, or is he only be able, or is he one of the runners that's only able to listen to the coach's instruction and they don't really know the fundamentals of whatever they're doing? They just know this coach is good. I'm gonna listen to him. Whatever he says, I listen to him. Because there are two, or maybe three different types of runners, and I just listed off two of them: the ones that know what they're doing and the ones that just listen to what they're told because they trust their coach completely, right? Or for the most part, right? So if he's one of the guys that can train himself or he's, I don't know how the the uh, details of his specific band works, but under my assumption here, he's not able to train with his coach, right? Or the, or the team or anything. So if he's been able to maintain some level of fitness, then I think that he's going to come back strong. We know there are a couple of things that he has over the competition. Here's one thing that he has over the competition. Let's look at the results here. You know what? You know what he can do over Trayvon Bromel. Unfortunately for Bromel, yeah, sure, he ended off the season well with a new PR, right? Or a personal best for everybody outside the U.S. We use PR, PB. Uh, it's interchangeable, really. But he has a new personal best, and yet he could not perform when it was needed. We don't know if he was through an injury or something like that. At this point, it looks like he kind of choked. There's no no, no word from his staff or anything like that. So at this point, it's just he did not perform when he needed to. And so when it comes to bringing the uh, medal back to the USA from the Olympics, at least, right, from the Olympics to World Championships, is already in the USA's hands in the form of Christian Coleman. But bringing it back as in, the USA uh, has not won the gold in a long time. I mean, the world championship, yeah, sure. We got the last two. But when you're talking about world championship and Olympics together, well, the next very next year, who's going to bring it back? Is Jacobs going to take it? Coleman doesn't look like a big contender to uh, take the title. You know why? Oh, not Coleman. 
Trayvon Bromel doesn't look like it because when he goes through the rounds, yeah, sure, he can run a good one-off race. But guess what Coleman has shown us? Right here, look at this. This was his personal best right here. His personal best was that 9.76 second in the final. This is how you do it. This is how you would want to have that. Let's look at his progression right here, right? The progression here in the uh, the 100. Now, sure, he didn't run his uh, best time back here. Let's look at the results in uh, 2017. But if you could run near your best time or your best time in uh, the championships, that's good. Now, he's running against a headwind. I think he would have been closer to his personal best that he set that year earlier at the uh at at the uh in eugene right so this is what's needed to be able to perform if you cannot bring it on the day of the championship you're not going to be able to take anything and coleman has one the jets two he has the ability to go through the rounds and still run a personal best what does uh what is his competition looking like? So here, let's bring up some pictures here. Now he took a good scalp here in the form of Justin Gatlin. Sure, Justin Gatlin was still going a little bit past his uh prime and everything like that. Same thing with Usain Bolt. He lost against Usain Bolt actually. Uh no, he was ahead of Usain Bolt and lost against Justin Gatlin here in 2017. But and Usain Bolt was a little bit past his prime at least for that year. Uh, my, my understanding is Usain Bolt would have been able to come back. He was still young enough to, to do that. But there are several factors that I don't want to jeopardize the quality of this here. But look, this is what Coleman can do to runners. Look at this gap he can put on the field. And it's, it's so fitting that this picture, he's wearing black and they're wearing the, uh, the blue and green uniforms. And he's got a gap on them. He can gap people at the start with that. Now, Obviously, there's something with uh, Trayvon Bromel can get out pretty hard, but then he can be caught. Coleman, people say they worry about him getting caught, but what does Coleman do? He said he looked like he didn't get caught at the World Championships in Doha. Now, did he? He got out and people may be able to close a gap on him, but it doesn't matter. If you can't close the gap and pass somebody, it doesn't matter. So at this point, if he continues to work on his strength, if he continues to work on the mid race uh, part, then he doesn't really have to worry as much about somebody trying to close on him. But he will, he will have to worry just a little bit. No lie here. He does have to worry about this competitor right here. And the competitor that he's going to have to worry about more, in my opinion, is Fred Curley. He has been showing that he's got what it takes to close on people. He's shown it in the 200 as he's running it more, right? He's shown it in the 100 as he's getting used to both of those events, right? The more and more he runs these events, the more and more he, he shows us that he can chase people down. Now, unfortunately for him, uh, he's... It, it depends. If he can do it in a championship final, great. He finished second at the Olympics. Now, a lot of you are going to be confused why I'm featuring him ahead of uh, Jacobs or uh, ahead of DeGrasse. Now, DeGrasse doesn't seem to be able to consistently get that in the 100. Now, I trust him in the 200, but in the 100, that's a little bit different. It's a little bit iffy. So, uh, but I still do expect DeGrasse to at least be able to medal like he's done this year. So he's he's finished second. I think he could have won had he been uh, in a different lane and he could have seen both sides. He was focusing on DeGrasse where he should have, uh, I guess, scanned his eyes on both sides as quickly as possible to see where his opponents were. I am convinced that uh, Fred Curley could have won the Olympics this year. But hey, could have, would have, should have. This one, he obviously did lose uh, here. I think this is going to be his biggest competitor when it comes to this year, what I see as far as the fast finishers. Ferdinand, he's coming up for Kenya. Let's, not, let's mention him here. Yeah, sure. An honorable mention for Ferdinand Amanula. Yes, he set an African record. Can he do it through the rounds? That's going to be his biggest problem. He's good in these one-off races. He's good to come uh, maybe one or two rounds. 
But can he do it after three rounds? Can he do it at the championship? Can he peak correctly? Jacobs, we know that he has the speed and what it takes to win, right? But can he beat Christian Coleman? I am not convinced that he can beat Christian Coleman. Like I said, I am more convinced that uh, Fred Curley can beat Christian Coleman or even DeGrasse over Jacobs. And even though Jacobs may be the Olympic champion, I am more convinced that the people that he has to worry about are the people that actually finish behind Jacobs. And this one took people off guard. Now that they're aware, now that they can see who they're competing against, I think they will not let, take this as lightly as they did before. And it might seem weird like, oh, how can you take somebody lightly? It's just about sprinting as fast as possible. Yeah, those things do come into play. But at the same time, you can have the... Uh, nervousness of that final the nervousness of the big names around you and then sometimes the motivation when you know exactly what to look for and i think that's what happened to curly curly did not realize that jacobs would have put on the jets and beat him i mean that's just what happened if he wouldn't realize that jacobs would have been a threat as well i don't know uh, for certain, but I'm convinced that he might have been able to beat Jacobs. Now, when it comes to Bromel, like I said, this man has gone through so many things. He had to be wheelchaired off in 2016. He's had to work himself back up. But at the end of the day, when you're running a 9-7-7 early in the season, and then you cannot produce when it matters the most, right? You run a 9-8-9-9. Then you go down to 9-7. Still in the nine eights, nine nines, nine eight. You're still able to do it in the nine eights. Okay, cool. We expect you to at least do something like that, right? You ran a nine 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 seven seven. Cool. Then you come through and you can't make it into the final. You're struggling. You're struggling. You cannot make it into the final. Something about your training cycle may be off, right? Something in the training cycle. Maybe you went through some niggles that went into something more serious. Maybe it was your jet lag or something. But whatever it was, he could not produce where we got other people. So that's why I'm marking a big crimson red letter flag over him where he might not be able to take on Christian Coleman. And I'm convinced that Coleman may be able to defend his title. It's going to be hard to beat the man. It's going to be hard to beat Christian Coleman straight out. I think it's going to be very hard. He's going to be the one to watch for, but we're going to have to see him earlier in the season. Did he lose a lot in not being able to train with this coach? Because it might take him more than, I don't know, this next year to come back. You know what happens when people get banned. If they don't have the proper coaching or uh, the proper workouts, they can injure themselves because they're still trying to keep up their fitness. They could lose too much fitness where they can't come back. Will he be in world record shape again or slightly around there, right, in the 60? Because if he's anywhere near where he was last year, yeah, I'm just going to have to give it to him. Like I said, I'm just going to have to give it to him uh, when it comes to this. What do you guys think? Do you guys agree with me, disagree with Christian Coleman being able to take on Fred Curley, uh, Lamont Jacobs, Andre DeGrasse, Trayvon Bromel, and others, right? Ferdinand Amanula which always changes up his name every other meet. He goes either by his middle or his last name. But Amanula is where I uh, picture him the most since I've seen him uh, do that the most. When he wears that name, he runs the fastest. So I guess when he's wearing the bib uh, name, we know how fast he's going to run. If he wears Amanula, he's running faster. If he doesn't, then he's not. <laughs> okay, so I'll catch you all on the next one. This has been a Head and Shoulders ATR production where we cover athletes' performances and otherwise that are head and shoulders above the rest. Please consider becoming a regular contributor to our channel. Catch you all on the next one. Peace.